So good afternoon, it's great to see you today. I'm Karen Plout. I'm the Glenn W. Sample Dean of Agriculture in the College of Agriculture. And I'm really glad to be here today to celebrate this great moment for agriculture and biological engineering. It is a great department that crosses two colleges, agriculture and engineering. And I have to admit, last March we debated about doing a virtual ribbon cutting. And the smartest thing we did is we didn't do it. Instead, we get to be here today to celebrate this new building. So really exciting day for us. I'd like to start by recognizing some individuals in the audience. So please wave when I say your name. We have many representatives across the university here, including members of the Board of Trustees, including student trustee Mark G, who is an uh, ABE student. So trustees, wave your hands. Great. We have the former dean of the College of Agriculture, Jay Ackridge. Um, I don't... We have deans some of our, from some of our other colleges across the campus. So wave your hands. Very good. We have Bernie Engel, who was the former department head of ABE and is now the associate dean for research and graduate education. <laughs> Woo! One of the best things I could have done is stole him away from the department to have in my office. We have a great new head, Nate Mosher, who you'll hear from. And, and we have Bernie, so we're in great shape. Uh, we have local and state government officials, including our own Sheila Klinker in the corner here. Sheila, if you want to wave. We have people from physical facilities, architectural and construction design, who all helped design this building. Want to thank them. As well as our development people who helped make this possible. So let's thank all them. We have many donors here today, and each of you played a role in making this happening, happen, from our donors in state government, uh, who helped us obtain state funding, to the president, provost, board of trustees, and many others. So really, I want to give a round of applause to everyone who, make, who helped to make this building a reality. As you know, this building is both a renovation of the old ABE building over here that was built in 1928, as well as the addition of the beautiful new building. And if you have not had a chance to go inside and see these facilities, they're really beautiful, and take that time to do that. In the short time this building has been open, many students across campus have found it because it's such a wonderful environment that they've come across to this new space in order to study and enjoy refreshments and just have a great time. The ABE uh, department is one of the true gems on campus because it's a collaborative uh, exercise between both the colleges of agriculture and the colleges of engineering. I think many of you in this audience know ABE is number one. It is the best in the country. It's number one ABE program. <laughs> yep. And that's for the last 11 years running for our undergraduate program and 10 years for our graduate program. As part of the department's three degree programs, Ag Systems Management, Ag Engineering, and Biological Engineering, our faculty are teaching their students how to improve our environments, develop and manage technology intensive agricultural production and processing systems, and how to create more sustainable products and so much more. The impact that our faculty, staff, and students, and alumni is critically important in our world today, as our students are the workforce of the future, and our research and extension programs improve the lives across the state and beyond. I want to thank all the donors who invested in this state-of-the-art fa facility, and in particular, I'd like to thank a few other partners. Parker Hannafin, those from Parker Hannafin, if you'll raise your hand. I know they're out there. Right over here. The representatives from John Deere. There's a number of those. They're over here. Brian and Beth Vorst. <laughs> and Larry and Lola Huggins. <laughs> and just so you all know, Larry 
was a former ABE department head and now emeritus faculty member. The generosity of these individuals has made a huge difference to realizing the dream of this new building. In addition to that, we're fortunate to have about 150 generous alumni, friends, and donors who made this building a reality. The names are inscribed on the donor wall just inside the building, so please take a chance to look at that later. I'd also like to thank the state for their investment in the future of this program. We know that the ag systems management and the engineering programs housed inside these new facilities are preparing students to be industry level ready. They will help with innovative education, research, and extension programs for the future. So I want to thank you all for joining us today and give my colleague now, Meng Chen, who's the dean, uh, the vice president of Purdue University and the John A. Edwardson Dean of the College of Engineering, a chance to give you a few remarks. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Karen. And this shows to everyone what we can do together between colleges at this great institution. Thank you for the partnership. And when my wife and I were driving up this morning with two of our kids, Augustine and Vivia, sitting there, uh, we were reminded yet again on this beautiful day in the harvest season just how important it is for Purdue to be here with the ABE department. And you know, when I was uh, moving here over four years ago now from uh, one of the states on the East Coast, uh, my kids asked me, you know, Dad, we really like corns. Will there still be corns in Indiana? I said, look, I was told I'm sure it's not accurate that there is nothing but corn in India. Well, you see quite a bit of corn right here, but I assure you there's a lot more. There is a lot more human talents here as well. Congratulations to all those who made this possible on this date of dedication of the new ABE building. Congratulations to the faculty, students, and staff to make this the number one undergrad and graduate ABE department in the United States. And congratulations to the whole department on your 100th birthday. Happy birthday. Now, Nate, according to the protocol that President Mitch Daniels established, you have to every morning wake up and do 100 push-up every day now. It grows with the age. Well, I was told by Nate just the other day that uh, 100 years ago, when the ABE department was created, the number of horses on the farms in this country reached all-time high. And today, it is about digital forestry, precision agriculture. It is about data, how we sense data, collect data, compute with data, and deploy data to our food supply. It is about manufacturing, growing beef, I heard. And I'm sure it tastes also better uh, with uh, the outstanding ability to synthesize food supply. It is about those things, those autonomous, connected things like the ones you see right here and the systems that they create together. It is about that interface between the digital and the physical, between what we code or what we touch, between the bytes and the atoms, such as the remarkable phenotyping facility that we have here in the ABE department. And I'm constantly reminded that we have the nation's best fluid power systems here. We have the nation's most unique solar panels out here on the farm that's elevated and tilted automatically so that electricity generation and crop growing can share sunshine together. 
And I'm reminded that we have the nation's best renewable resource research lab here, LORI. Wow, that, that is the LORI crowd over there. And we have the longest running soybean entrepreneurship competition here in the country. You should really try to taste the soybean-based crayons. <laughs> Kay and I tried to prevent Algi and Vivia from tasting them. They tried it. They said it tasted pretty good, quite soybean-flavored. And we have the nation's best open data and technology for agriculture, the Oats Center. We have also one of the only four National Science Foundation Engineering Research Centers here devoted to Internet of Things to Agriculture. Just one last year. Congratulations. <laughs> With President Daniels and Provost Eckridge and the Board of Trustees support, I know that the Purdue's next moves, including digital agriculture and forestry, will yet again change the world we live in. So here's to the next 100 years of Purdue ABE's impactful scholarship, ever-increasing undergrad and graduate enrollment, and engagement with our beautiful Hoosier State and throughout the world. Thank you so much. And now it's my honor to introduce the Soybean Alliance professor and the head of the number one ABE department in the country, Nate Mosher. Good afternoon. It's my uh, pleasure to welcome all of you on behalf of the faculty, students, and staff to agricultural and biological engineering here at Purdue University. I am very glad that all of you were able to join us to celebrate this very great moment for ABE. And as you heard, it's our 100th birthday. So I think it's only fitting that we are celebrating this new facility on our 100th birthday. I'd also like to uh, thank Sheila Klinker, our representative, as well as the uh, entire Indiana State House for this proclamation recognizing us on our centennial year. Thank you. <laughs> now, Dean Chang had given you a few facts and figures about what was going on a century ago when Purdue University had the vision to found agricultural engineering here. And I'm sure some of you or maybe most of us have considered the parallels between current events and a century ago, when in 1918 there was a novel virus causing a respiratory disease all around the world. But I think there's some other parallels uh, that are interesting as well. In 1918, John Deere sold their very first tractor, the Waterloo Boy. Up until that point, they were mostly known for producing horse-drawn plows. And as Dean Chang mentioned, that that also represented the year of the largest population of horses and mules in the U.S. And by 1945, there was more horsepower provided by machines than by horses. Also interestingly, in 1918, John Jones, not our uh, professor emeritus, but another Don Jones at the University of Connecticut, reported a practical application of this new biological science known as genetics, a practical way of a four-way hybrid, hybridization of corn. And that technology was translated only a few years later to a new company that still exists today, based in Iowa, Pioneer Hybrid Seed, that started the modern seed corn industry. And by the 1940s, nearly all commercial corn in the U.S. had adopted this hybrid technology. These and other technologies, some of which, some of which were invented here at Purdue University, would result in a century of stable food supplies, improved agricultural productivity, better farm safety, and new opportunities for rural families and the nation at large. I see many parallels between 100 years ago and where agriculture stands today. Just as past scientific discoveries and new technologies changed food production in profound ways, digital agriculture, the internet of things, 
data analytics, machine learning, automation, and biological technologies and gene editing, microbiomics, synthetic biology, and others are making and will almost certainly continue to remake agriculture over the next 100 years. I am confident that the faculty, staff, and the students in ABE today are making many small steps toward these next giant leaps that will change education, discovery, and technology that will remake agriculture into a more sustainable and more productive endeavor into the future. This building represents bringing together the faculty and staff and the students in ABE. Until December of 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, when we were able to move into these beautiful new facilities, we were spread across 11 different buildings from one end of campus to the, the other. Hey, we all knew about working remotely before it got into fashion. But seriously, these new facilities are already accelerating research collaborations, innovative thinking, and hands-on learning and doing that's necessary to meet the challenges and the promise of the next century of innovation. Students have great opportunities to learn and apply what they are learning in the classroom in very practical and hands-on ways. I'm confident that the next century is going to be even a better one for ABE than the past. On behalf of everyone in ABE, I wish to extend our thanks and gratitude to everyone who made these new facilities possible. The vision, generosity, and faith that you show in what we do is inspiring. Thank you. It's now my honor to introduce the current president of Purdue University, Mitch Daniels. Nate, Karen, Mung, and good friends all, uh, thanks for being here today. What an astonishing thing to contemplate uh, the vision of a hundred years ago that a, uh, a department that is uh, dedicated to the purposes Nate just outlined has accomplished the things he just mentioned uh, should be brought into being. I mean, such a different age, it's really hard to remember. I, I may be off a year or two, but for instance, I think that's the last year IU beat Purdue in basketball. You know, it is a, it's a fantastic sports weekend here. Every time, every time we have one, it puts me in mind of those, you know, great uh, heroes we admire. Uh, our good friend Leroy Keyes we lost this year. Great coaches like Gene Cady. And then, of course, uh, that legend who, cre who built a dynasty that won 10 consecutive national championships. Of course, I'm talking about Bernie Engel. <laughs> and Nate, nobody wanted to follow John Wooden. And they were right. But you and your colleagues have carried on, as, as people were not able to do with that dynasty. And we're looking forward. You know, every year when it happens, I, I ask somebody, you know, are, are, don't they retire the trophy after a while? You know, just let somebody else think they're number one. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, they don't ever have to do that. And I, uh, I expect that we expect to see you all uh, continue that sensational winning streak. That all of Purdue, I hope you know, it's not just the two colleges that collaborate here. It's not just the people who are, uh, uh, commit their professional lives to your discipline. Everybody at Purdue is aware of what you and, and, and your uh, colleagues uh, represent. And uh, it's, what we all, it's what we aspire to everywhere. Hmong talks frequently about excellence at scale. There are places who can be excellent if they are small enough and elite enough, uh, but there are uh, no places like ours which uh, can uh, year after year succeed in, t in turning out uh, world-class research and world-class talent in the numbers that, that Purdue has, has now attained. And you are at the at the uh, front edge of that. Uh, you represent really what we aspire to be in every uh, corner of this university. Just cannot thank you enough for that leadership and that example. You know, just one other thing. The, uh, uh, we we are try to be very careful as stewards of the donor's money, of the taxpayer's funds, of our students' tuition payments. Um, they talk about the edifice complex in higher education. There are places that just build almost for the sake of building. They can, they can pat themselves on the back, 
cut ribbons and leave the bills to somebody else years later. We have never believed in that. We don't think you want us to. But where we do have growth and where we do have excellence to reinforce and where we do have need, by the way, when they were selling us on the, me on the idea of this building, uh, it was only eight places, that the, which that was impressive enough to me. Now it's 11. I, t I told Bernie by five years from now it'll be 25, but uh, eight was enough, as the, uh, as the TV show used to suggest. And we are so uh, 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 proud of the, everyone who helped bring this uh, into being, all those Karen thanked and, every, and, and so many others. Um, if there's ever been a purpose uh, to which you have committed your resources, or uh, Sheila, uh, Representative Klinker, the state has committed its, or that we have put those precious dollars we ask our students to pay for the opportunity to come to Purdue, if there's ever been a purpose for which we could all say there's no question that, that those dollars are well spent, there's no question that they will bring a huge return in great lives for young people, in great achievements to the benefit literally of the whole world, this is it. So happy birthday, uh, congratulations on the facility, and now just keep giving us year after year of number one results. Thank you very much. Once again, I want to thank everyone for coming to celebrate our new facilities. Before we finish up, though, I'd like to take this opportunity to go over just a little bit of housekeeping. I hope that all of you are able to join us inside for a reception and some tours of the building. There is food in our high base base at the back end of the building, so please go into the doors behind us uh, here on my right to your left and follow the group back to the refreshments. The building tours will be self-guided, and you can use your printed program to locate spaces that you might wish to visit. There are students located throughout the building right now that will direct you where to go and are able to talk with you about the building, their studies in ABE, and most importantly, what excites them and where their passions lie in making agriculture better in the future. For those of you that are heading to Ross Aid to cheer on the Boilermakers, we will have a shuttle looping back and forth from here to the stadium until 3.15. The shuttles are picking up passengers to my right uh, in the drive between the ABE building and the Lyles Porter building to our south. At this time, I would like to invite Dean Plowd and Executive Vice President Chang back to the stage. Utility Project Ag Rover. This is a student team that's been developing this low-cost platform to foster entrepreneurs and small hold farmers in sub-Saharan Africa for over a decade. This machine is uh, allowing uh, farmers in Africa to reap the benefits of mechanization in improving their uh, agricultural productivity. This machine on my right here is a thresher that processes grain and can be paired with the machine.
not only bringing new technologies to uh, farmers around the world, uh, automation to the farms in the U.S. and globally as well is allowing uh, more productivity for farm production here in the U.S. and around the world. To your call once more, we rally on the modern, hear our praise. Where the Wabash spreads its valley filled with joy, our voices raise. From the skies in swelling echoes come the cheers that tell the tale of your victories and your heroes. Helper, do we sing all hail? Hail, hail to old Purdue, all hail to our old gold and black. Hail, hail to old Purdue, our friendship may she never lack. Ever grateful, ever true, thus we raise our song anew. Of the days we spend with you, all hail our old Purdue. All right, thank you all. This concludes our program for today. Please join us for some refreshments and tours of the building.